It's hard when you now the pressure's on. I don't know what to talk about. Do you use any oils in your beard? No, no. say something clever. No, oh, uh, I use beard balm in my beard. Beard balm. I yeah, it's I don't you know this is the first time I've ever grown tried to grow a beard. Now that I have it, I didn't realize there was all this maintenance involved. You oh, know, huge. like you gotta like do stuff with sums. it. Yeah, yeah. it's you gotta Lump comb it, and you know, I got so I got a I got a, a wash in the shower, and then I have a beard balm, which is like a creamy little it makes nice. it soft and fluffy. You should and get stuff. like a mustache wax. Mustache wax. No, like, what right do you there. do with the mustache wax? It goes right there, and it smells amazing. Well, so right. even if you smell like poo poo, <laughs> you, you smell, smell good, good stuff. stuff. <laughs> so it, it's quite, quite the uh, commodity. <laughs> but hello and welcome. Hey. to the Pop Culture Field Manual Podcast, sitting right at the intersection of weapons, action, the military, and pop culture. I'm your host, Cameron Fath, and with me, as always, is the extremely charismatic Israel Wright. Thanks. Yes. It's good to be here. I realize that uh, there's going to be one of these episodes that we did not introduce ourselves. Yes. So. I, I, Hopefully, if they know who we are by now. I would, I would hope so. Yeah. Why are they listening to it? Like, oh, I listened to that one episode, the, but they, that, I didn't know their names. They didn't the, introduce themselves. Yeah, the, the pop culture field, whatever. <laughs> Never going guys? there again. No. Dude, by the way, yesterday, side note, uh, I was live streaming, and I got raided by like, it was like 300 plus people. Really? By some, some guy in the Ukraine. The Ukraine? Yeah. Or no, Czech Republic. Sorry. Sorry, Czech, Ukrainians. No. Sorry, Czech yeah, Republicans. No. Uh, Czech Republic. And and he didn't even speak English. I watched the end of his stream to yeah. see him lead up. He'll be like, he'll be like but -da 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 -da, Green Beret, but -da 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 -da, Gameology, but -da 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 -da, live stream. <laughs> and so he <laughs> sent his people over to me, and they said, hey, he says hi, Dethane. Shout out to Dethane. Uh, really cool. So anyway, just our our the word is spreading far and wide of the Cameron Fath and the Israel Wright gameology videos. That's so, cool, man. Yeah. It's always it's always a pleasure to like go back because I'm very egotistical, so I like to read the comments and I ignore <laughs> the bad ones. Um, but you guys just build us up, and it's awesome. Yeah, um, it's really just, great. The the feedback is great. Yeah, we love it. We love it. It's, Thanks it's, for your it's, support. It's, absolutely, everybody. we yeah. wouldn't be here. Well, I mean, we definitely be. We would be here, but we we wouldn't. We wouldn't be people sitting, wouldn't know about us. Yeah, they wouldn't know about us, but we'd definitely still be here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Nothing's guaranteed. Yeah, who knows? Maybe we wouldn't yeah. be here. God, yeah. that's ex tell, we got ex existential, right? Yeah, don't forget to tell your loved ones you love them because you don't know. <laughs> you never but, know. Okay. Cameron, anyway, just make sure you're talking into your microphone. You keep talking. I keep looking up because I'm I'm interested in this cup of but coffee. But you can like extend. Yeah, extend your arm out a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. Oh, oh, now it's all horrible. We'll do this. Yeah. Okay. Now you, oh, you sound so good. Oh, sounds so good. Okay. What about me, Chris? You always sound good. Okay, guys. Scoot over this way. There yes. We, yeah, that'll help. There that we go. way it can. Yes. Now right. we're squared up. <laughs> okay. Squared away. Where were we? Well, listen, uh, Cameron. Uh, another great episode. I'm really excited for this one. We're gonna go over. Uh, some of our favorite on-screen battles, battles from pop culture. Uh, like I, we got a lot of uh, movie stuff here. I'm looking at, uh, especially movie stuff. Tell a few television shows, but uh, we're going over some of our favorite on-screen engagements. Whether yeah. a lot of them are large-scale battles, a couple of smaller-scale ones that I got on here on the list. But uh, it's just always great to see. Like just the massive battles, man. They're just the hundreds or even thousands groups going at each yeah. other and stuff Made like the that. Battle what it begin. <laughs> Squawk! Let them <laughs> let them fight. Yeah, honorable mention role models. Role that models. Battle, the LARPing scene battle where they dress up like Kiss <laughs> and they go. It's like, oh, that movie's classic. If you haven't seen Role Models, go after it. You ever see that? Uh, the is a lower budget one, but it's Knights of Badassery. Knights. It's got of Peter Badassery. Dinklage in it. No. Yeah. Oh, That's uh, awesome. but Knights of Bad. Oh, I'm gonna yeah. get the name wrong. Peter Dinklage is. In it. It's about a bunch of LARPers, and they actually unleash an actual like demonic presence, and they have oh, to really course. fight. You know. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> LARPing. Funny. That's actually one of the things that I want to do really bad. As LARP, far as like action, real, LARPing is live action role, role playing. playing. Yeah, for those of you, for those of you uncultured swine, <laughs> you the ones with teams. girlfriends and stuff. Yeah, the and ones careers. that live normal lives. <laughs> um, no, I, I want to do ye old LARPing because you know uh, I participated old. in airsoft and you know I was doing with Milsom West and did that event. And that was super fun. But I want to do like the clashing, clashing of ah, the metal, you metal really on metal. Like, yeah. I don't want BBs on BBs. I want metal on steel. Boffer on boffer sword. Yeah. I, I actually, uh, found a bit of trivia. I grew up, 
uh, I grew up. Uh, well, not really. I didn't really grow up. Uh, grow up. <laughs> as I was growing up, my sister uh, was really into the SCA, the Society of Creative Anachronisms. And they she was into kind of like the mil- the medieval period, uh-huh. you know, where they would actually do what you're talking about. They would reenact, quote unquote, reenact old wars, battles. like from, yeah, the war of whatever, like medieval battles and stuff. And they would have a certain force, you know, certain forces going at each other. And they would go at each other, man. They would just hit it. They had the armor. Yes. People would make their own armor. People would make their own weapons. It's all made out of wood and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. it still hurt, Good man. People, yeah, it was pretty, pretty yeah. awesome. How's the grass taste, little man? <laughs> ever seen that video? Just shield bashes him, hits no. the ground. Oh, it's awesome. A little bit of HEMA action. Yeah. You ever see those competitions? HEMA. HEMA. Yeah, HEMA stands for Historic European Martial Arts. It's kind of a, a resurgence or a it's renaissance. The MMA of renaissance. Well, it's 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 rediscovering old texts and documents from like the 14s, 15s, 1600s uh, of old medieval martial arts styles. When we think martial arts, we think of Eastern, like, you know, karate, and, you know, yeah, all that kind of stuff, Taekwondo. But, you know, they fought hand-to-hand in mm-hmm. Europe, you know, throughout the ages, and they kind of have rediscovered these documents and old pictures and fighting styles, and they try to recreate them, and they actually have competitions and stuff Very like cool. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can see there's, like, I think History Channel has a couple of shows where oh, they really? actually follow people around, and yeah. these big yoked dudes just going yeah. out and hitting each other, you yeah, know, firefighters awesome. and, you know, stuff like that. That's cool. On their off time. That it's really mm-hmm. fun. Um well, let's get started, man. Let's. Uh, we got a bunch of a bunch of great ones I'd like to talk about. Um, yeah, absolutely. That since you're so excited, you started off. I am excited. I'm gonna go for the for the first one off the list. Uh, actually, I'm gonna skip down. Yeah. Because uh, I'm looking at one right now, and we gotta talk about this one right off the bat. But it's the Battle of Helm's Deep. God damn it, man! I, was, I wanted to. I wanted to mention that. Dude, one. hey, you talk away, man. I knew you'd be excited, so I, I wanted would, to skip right to that one. Awesome. Man. Actually, the Two Towers is my favorite out of all three movies. Despite the third one getting most of the awards, I, there's just something about the Battle of Helm's Deep in the second one that is just so cool to me. And not to mention, it's like over half the movie long. It is. It's it like is. yeah, it's like forty minutes long or something. You yeah. know, the, the half the, one half of the movie is them getting there, and the other half is them fighting and being there. Yeah. You know, toss me. Gondor calls for aid. Yeah. yeah, toss me. You gotta toss me. Yeah, the the elves come in like the lead, in the yeah. lead. They get there. It's it's hemmed in. So they this is their last stand. There's no yeah. back door. You there know? is no. That's, and uh, yeah, they're, the their elves. asses to a wall, and it's like it's he, it's this place or it's nothing. Yep. And the walls of Heaven's Deep have never been breached. That's right. And they will not. <laughs> I love I, I Theoden uh, King. Theoden has all these amazing yeah. monologues, like these really deep, poetic, introspective, existential yeah. monologues, you know? It's, it's quite inspiring. I like the guy statue when they first walk into the gate and he's just got this giant hammer in his hands. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like when you go to Iron Forge in World of Warcraft and there's this giant dwarf just with these hammers. I'm a big hammer man. I yeah. like the hammer time. But, like, hammers are the most brutal. Like, Morningstar, any type of, like, swinging blunt, mace, blunt yeah. trauma is uh-huh. just, if you use that in war, you're a psychopath. It's like a callback to, like, ye ancient time. Yeah. We just, it was just clubs. Clubs. You know, it's like a phantom no metal blades, club. No blades, no stabby things, yep. just just wacky things. No pew pew, no explode, no. you know. It's just, uh, <laughs> let me club this. It's like, let me, cl- it's finding mates. You club them over the head and you drag them into your cave. <laughs> That's what is right. that from year one? He's That's like, just go club her, man. <laughs> go over there and club her. I never saw that one, but we you all never, know. It's, it's yeah. funny. It's, we all know about it. That that imagery, the iconic yeah. imagery. Kunk, the drags cave, her man. into cave. But anyways, back to Helm's Deep. <laughs> the two, you know Lord of the Rings has a very special place in my heart. Oh, absolutely. It's is, is my all-time favorite uh, trilogy. Um, I'm so excited for this new uh, TV series you that's are coming excited. out. I'm extremely excited. All right, cool, man. I'm, I hope, really I'm skeptically hopes. optimistic. Yes, I have very high hopes. Um, as long my, I just have some some little details. I pull out my list. It's a scroll. Goes up. <laughs> just have some little things I'm worried about. I have um, a few issues. Yeah, just a few issues that need <laughs> to be addressed. I, I the thing that made Lord of the Rings so great for me is the FX. Like mm. the, it wasn't CGI. I mean, it was to like the, the giant battles, but majority. A lot of miniatures. Yeah, a lot of miniatures. And the majority of it was, you know, they would put hundreds of people in full costume. Yep. And in The Hobbit, which lost it, like The Hobbit lost it. Good storyline, but just what Go. did it for me is all the orcs were CGI. Yeah, man. And I'm yeah. like, that's terrible. The thing that made it so cool was like, it's a real person, real makeup, doing real things. And that's what made the movie so awesome. Yeah, it kind of, it almost gives it kind of a, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of elements that go into it, almost like a timeless feel. Yeah. Like, I will I will go back maybe every year, every other year, 
and watch the, the original trilogy, uh, the Lord of Rings trilogy, over again. Yeah, you know, but I do the I'm, same thing. I, I can't say that I will ever watch the Hobbit series again. Oh no, 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 no. no. that was like a one and done. But yeah. I will if it, if it's on, you know, if it's on, it's on. I'll watch it. But mm. straight up, every year I do the same thing. I have the I have the box set, which is the extended cuts and the director's cuts, mm-hmm, and I'll put mm-hmm. in the extended versions and just splurge twelve hours. Mm-hmm. Just and waste it. It's day. just wasted because I mean the extended stuff has so much cool things in it that you didn't see in the originals. Cameron, what are some of your favorite moments from the Battle of Helm's Deep? Like, why does okay. it stick with you? It sticks with me. So, Legolas sliding down the staircase. Throwing on the, the shield Uruk-hai down. Shield, just yeah. Sending arrows. I think he sends, like, three. Mm-hmm. And then at the bottom, he shoots the guy in the uh, in the chest and then pulls the arrow out of him. And he's like, <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure he, he strikes him with the arrow first, pulls it out, then b- then knocks it and shoots another guy with the yeah. arrow he just stabbed. So that's super ba- uh, that's super badass. And then the scene when um, when I'm, I'm a big Legolas nerd. Actually, yeah. fun fact: when when I was my first bow and arrow, my um, I got for Christmas, and instead of being labeled from Santa Claus. It was from Legolas. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so, way to go, mom and yeah, dad. Yeah, way to go, mom and pop. That was that's something that stuck with me my entire life. So <laughs> I was like seven, and I opened it, and it was a bow and arrow. I was like, yes. <laughs> um, but sidetrack. Um, no, back on track here. That's, that's great, a man. Fun fact about me. Um, but yeah, when uh, that one Urukai is coming in with the torch, and they're about to blow Dude, the wall. Dude, the suicide bomber. Like, yeah, yeah. The, the sapper. Take him out. Yeah, and they, they shoot he shoots him, him like times. four times, and they blow that wall, and that's and how Aragon ends up in the bottom. I love, I love the what they do is that you can tell that this one was chosen because he yeah. has all the marks the on him. Yeah, yeah the, the different markings. I like, mean, those were an upgraded Urukai. That was like the top line of the Urukai. Oh, so there was okay. multiple characters that were wearing that. That was kind of like their warlords. Ah, okay. Yeah, because right. when once they go on the the once they get up the ladder, you can see they have different swords too. They have a double edge instead of the single edge, oh. so they can take out like multiple people. Those, those are like their berserkers, pretty good much. little bit of lore there. I yeah, like that. So, yeah. um, but yeah, after that, and then that kind of leads into my my also favorite part about that is when Aragon gets blasted off the wall into the water and they start breaching the wall and like they have everybody online yeah. and then they just start charging in and all the spears are down and Aragon like hits the spear to the side and they start going at it in that pond right there that, yeah. that scene is amazing that's awesome yeah. man so I could talk about that scene forever dude no man, I, I love it too I love I just love the like the feeling of like cause you know the whole deal is is like that there's this thread throughout the original trilogy of like the, the time of elves is over the time of men. And mm-hmm. like, there's not a lot of hope in like humanity. There's not a lot of hope in mankind. It's you know? so diverse. They're, yeah. they're separated. And that's like the first gleam of hope where like when I walk in, the guy's like, he's like, this is the last, the elves and men have not worked together in this long. Yep. He's like, we, tra- we aim on changing that. And yeah. it's just like, yes. Yeah, there's a little bit of hope there. Yeah. That's a sad, that's some of my favorite moments are like some of the sad moments when like that one elf captain who marches his dudes in there yeah, and he's he fighting capped. and stuff and he gets, he gets killed and like Aragorn's like holding him there, you yeah. know? So, oh, it just, it gets it me every gets time, man. Yeah. You know, uh, I love the little competition that Legolas and Gimli oh, yeah. have. Like that's one, that's two. And he's like, he's I'm, like, I'm, I'm at 19. On, he's like, I'm at 19. He's <laughs> God! <laughs> yeah. And then the third one, you know, where he takes out the elephant warrior, yeah. the giant elephant. He's like, that still only counts as one. <laughs> still only counts as one. <laughs> yeah, no, Gimli's awesome. I love, you know, if you ever watch the movie closely, the amount of stand-ins they have for Gimli is yeah insane there's yeah. at least nine to twelve different gimlis and yeah. you can like see them like when they're standing next to the pile of burnt orc bodies mm-hmm. that they're in the third one and they're coming after the or is that the second uh, oh it's so the, second. the beginning it's of the, the second, second one that's where they, they first after... introduced to the riders of rohan yeah yeah so they uh, yeah they're standing next to the body of like uh, and there's that that orc head on a stake yeah and if you look closely at gimli you're like that's not the guy. <laughs> it's so noticeable that that's not the guy. You're like, they, that's not the guy. They do such a good job because, yeah. uh, uh, oh, uh, Jonathan Reese davies No, not, yeah, Jonathan Reese davies uh, The actor, he's he's a big dude, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and a classic actor. He's been around forever. But mm-hmm. uh, they do such a good job of cutting back and forth yeah. between him and the stand-ins that you just, yeah. you don't even think about it. Yeah, you, you know? don't, unless you're, like, paying really close attention. Yeah. And yeah. I thought Gimli was... Um, Sean Connery for so long. Oh. For some reason, I thought Gimli was Sean Connery for so for so long until oh. I was like, "That's not Sean That's Connery." Funny. My my favorite uh, my favorite moment from the Helm's Deep battle is uh, when they think that it's over, like, oh, yeah. and he's like, 
let's do one last ride. Out let's with go me. ride out to meet them. Yeah. Ride out with me. And Theoden King's like, he's like, yes, you know, yes. Like, this will be the last ride of men, you know. Yeah. And they go out through down the ramp and they're yeah. fighting around. And then finally, the morning sun comes Gandalf yeah, off the white with the riders of Rohan, yeah, exactly. Carl Urban. Uh, and they ride down the hill. Yeah, and take it's them all. It's yeah. awesome, dude. That battle is so epic. That brings me to a, a, a very fond memory when, like, I said it earlier when Gimli's like, toss me. And yeah. He's like, what? <laughs> He's like, you gotta. T- I can't make that jump by myself. You gotta toss me. <laughs> and he toss, and him and Legolas just go, and they end up killing just like fifty to sixty orcs just fighting <laughs> off the bridge. That that's an awesome dude. That he's like, be- he's like, don't tell the elves. Don't, he's like, don't don't, don't tell the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Man. Oh no, it was Aragon that tosses him. Yeah, Aragon yeah, he's tosses. Like, he's like, are you sure? He's, he's like, like, are you okay. sure? He's like, okay. <laughs> 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 love yeah, it. Yeah, that's a great great movie. I'm gonna actually go and watch it after this. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's let's move on. We spent a good chunk of time. I mean, I could talk about the Lord of the Rings Dude, series all the we'll time. We'll have a whole episode. On a whole the episode of Lord of the Ring <laughs> battles and lore. Okay, since you picked that one, we have to talk about the Battle of Thermopylae. Yeah, in three hundred. Yeah, it's the famous. Uh, it's a real. It's a real event. Yes. Like the the Persian armies are coming mm. around. They're coming into you know the, the Greek Athens. You know all that mm. kind of area. And, yeah, they're taking over. Yeah, they're, they're taking over, sweeping across the land, yeah. and, uh, and the only people to say. Frank, no, yeah, Persian guy is Spartans. Spartans. Only three hundred, and Thermopylae is this place. It's like apparently like a narrow passage mm-hmm. that not a lot of people could get through. So they just like clog it up with yeah. their body, their with muscly, their, oily with their bodies, muscly oiled up bodies that spent months in preparation. To, <laughs> That's to right. Get. A lot of CrossFit. A lot you know? of CrossFit. A lot two two a days. That's right. Yeah. yeah. The train up for that movie is ridiculous. It's Gerald Butler, right? Gerard King, Butler, King even like uh, there's some people in there like Michael Fassbender's in there. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't recognize him at first, you know, because he's jacked. Yeah, <laughs> I, we, he's the guy that says, you know, when the when the guy's like, uh, we're, we have so many arrows, our arrows are going to blot out the, the sun. sun. He's like, when the wolf we'll fight, fight in the, the shade. shade. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> is that the guy with the eye patch? Uh, no, the guy with the eye patch is the guy who played Faramir in the uh, Lord of the Rings movie. Yes, yes, yes. He's yes. in there, and he's the guy telling the story kind of yeah, after the fact. Yeah. You find out. Mm, but, Faramir. Uh, the jealous brother. Yeah. There's something about... You love me, Dad! Sorry. Just... <laughs> will prove his worth. We're back yeah. to Lord of the Rings. We yeah, can't get away from it. We can't get rid of it. But it's no, like that... me with aliens, you yeah. know? Or Star Trek. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking Fucking of which, nerd. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the, the I love 300 just based off, like, it's a real... I mean, obviously, this isn't how it went down. They didn't right. attack them with like it's not a di- shot for shot remake. Yeah, they <laughs> didn't attack them with like the multitude of different caliber or calibers of warriors. Just yeah. like these beasts, these mythical beasts coming at them. But I thought <laughs> the movie was super entertaining, and I love the fact that like Spartans were the soft of the uh, basically yeah of you, that period. They of were time. just like they were just like this elite, very tight knit warrior yeah like warrior civilization or warrior nation, you know, mm-hmm. and. Uh, and I love, yeah, I love that they like uh, that. It's only three hundred. It's just something about the overwhelming odds battles, like almost yeah. like the suicide mission that even adds this kind of weight to it because they they know they're gonna die. Yeah, they know. You know, all they have to do is, and I think historically all they had to do was like hold them off for a while yeah, before the rest of the so the rest of the nations could rally, yeah. and then there was even like I think they featured it loosely in the second three hundred movie, the. Uh, mm-hmm rise of an empire where there's a sea battle that was even yeah. more pivotal yeah you know uh that's not featured in the movie 300 but uh but yeah and actually there was a and i actually read this one it was there was actually a book on the about the same event called the gates of fire by uh stephen pressfield mm. uh which is a really good it's more grounded uh in like reality it's not like oily muscly dudes you know yeah. but uh <laughs> yeah. it's uh that's even that's even cool because it he tries to break down like what it's like actually fighting hand to hand with somebody and like just the sights and the sounds and the smells of just like being in battle and the blood and the guts. It's really very graphically done, you know? Um, and I, I heard at the time there was a rumor that, um, they were trying to make, uh, who was it? Uh, George Clooney was trying to produce a movie based on the book Gates of Fire, you know, but I think they, maybe the studio decided to go like in a different direction or maybe a different studio got there first and said, Hey, we're going to do 300, like a comic book. Cause the comic book 300 is based or the, the, the movie based is a graphic novel. Is a graphic novel. Yeah. Yes. I think Frank Miller. Uh, but, uh, I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me on that. Uh, I will. Cause what do I know? I will hold you accountable. But, uh, but yeah, man, it's, uh, these ancient battles, these, uh, there's so many from like history that, um, 
are just like you hear the circumstances and it almost doesn't seem like it it actually happened like it was real um but you know back then man you had you had an entire like the spartans they they uh their, their whole life was war they would train from a young yeah. age and that that was all they knew and so they were really good they were Very they were good. the best at from what they a did. young age they would train every yeah. single day you saw the in the beginning of the scene the kids just fighting each other or in the ago the ago was coming out and like he was just punching that other kid in yeah. the face in slow-mo relentless yeah just nuts and then he had to take out that wolf in yeah the, <laughs> in the corridor but just the, a little the, foreshadowing the entire it's it's so interesting to me watching like ancient or just hearing about or reading about or researching about just ancient wars and like the strategy that was taken it wasn't right. just a bunch of guys you know uh, with swords and shields whacking each other it was like the entire positioning of their defense was all based off terrain analysis like yeah, yeah it, it was like they had you know a giant ledge to the to the right of them and they mm -hmm. had a funnel that could not be taken around until they found that deformed guy and he's like i know a way around like, oh, yeah okay but just the amount of you know thought and uh and planning that went into that i actually have a interesting fun fact right here his name is themistocles or something i don't know how to pronounce this but apparently he was uh the greek defense against the persian was planned by themistocles i don't know, if I know how to say his name. <laughs> some greek name yeah some greek name and, we just lost uh, all our greek followers just now. yeah they're like okay we'll, we'll tune in to you You're know disgrace they're, they're disgrace <laughs> Um, but that's super interesting. That's and cool, man. It, it was, yeah, that was so. His selection of the battlefield was pretty much paramount to wow. the success, and that battle lasted about three days. About three days. Wow. Three days, and it also says here that the Persian numbers was in the thousands, okay. like multiple thousands. So right. three hundred versus multiple thousands. Yep. Nuts. Yeah. Absolute carnage. I love it. I love you, you hear so there's a lot of stories like that throughout military history of a small force defending a position against a much larger force and through just smart tactics and uh you know uh just pure grit they yeah. uh, they either they either overcome or they still die but it takes like the fighting, force, fighting force a long time to like take them over you know or yeah. kill them you know uh, it's, and then they're always remembered you know it, you history. will be remembered that's uh that's one of the things if you die I'd rather die in a pile of brass than die on my knees like a coward. <laughs> That's right. That yeah. Living on forever in song exactly. and win and movies, apparently. In movies. Well, that's a great, that is a great battle. I'm glad you mentioned that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got another one here. Uh, a, a super great one. And this is just, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch from this movie that we could talk about. But uh, the D-Day landing the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, Omaha Beach. Dude. That's that's a gnarly, gnarly opening scene. They did it so well. So well. I, I, and I remember seeing it. I, it was one of those ones that, like, it was, like, one of those cinematic moments. Like, I've never seen anything like this before. Yeah. There were even, like, I mean, you hear stories about World War II veterans that had to leave the theater. Leave the or theater, even yeah. just veterans in general that, like, it so affected them, like, they couldn't watch it. Yeah. You know? Honestly, this might seem crazy in my head, but when I watched it, I had like a grin on my face. And I was just like, "This is it. This is this is how <laughs> just I want to die." Just a sadistic yeah, animal. I was like, "This is how I want to die. This is what I want to be in." <laughs> it's nuts. Oh, but uh, man. no, that scene was done so well. Like yeah. uh, Steven Spielberg, I I heard that it took about three weeks just to do. Oh, I believe it. That scene, and I absolutely believe it because the you know the the accuracy of like the guns the uh, the bombers running on the beach yep the uh, probably a lot of personal stories that yeah. they conglomerated maybe i guarantee you know because what we got tom hanks who's a big world war ii fan you got steven spielberg and you got mm -hmm. dale die yeah, who's steven a big Spielberg's, time advisor for a lot of these older yeah. war movies and steven spielberg has military lineage that i was reading on his oh. father was in world war ii oh wow, i didn't know that so i think that was one of his uh yeah, I'm, I can let me confirm that, but okay. I'm pretty sure when I was doing my research about tell us in it the earlier, comments, yeah, tell us in the comments. But I'm pretty sure his father was involved in World War II, so that kind of no held a special way. place in his heart. Wow. Um, but yeah, the only thing about this uh, this scene, even though it's so well done, and like you know the the MG 42s are rocking from the bunkers, and they're you know they're trying to Bangalore the the obstacles on the beach. They're doing Bangalore. a they're breaching a mind wire obstacle, right? And if you want to know how to do that, there's an acronym called SOSRA. It's Suppress, obscure, secure, reduce assault. So if yes. you follow if you if you saw if you follow that guidelines, you will breach anything and it's cool. What is that again? It is suppress, obscure, 
secure, reduce assault. It's pretty much you, su- you suppress the enemy, right? So it gives you freedom of maneuver. Yep. You obscure your position with smoke or or IDF. So you would basically mask your position okay. and then you secure, you get security on the breach and then you reduce with either explosive breaching or mechanical breaching. So we would use Bangalore's or something called a brazier breach, which you would probably like because it's legit a cross. Yeah, so yeah, somebody's running on about. the battlefield with like this giant cross and they, just, that. and they just put it on the, the razor wire or whatever the breach is and it blows at the smithereens. <laughs> and awesome, then man. obviously assault. Once it's open, you can clear breach or, you know, yeah. go in into, uh, go into your secondaries and then you, uh, yeah, so, then you assault. What was he saying? He said, look, I washed my hands for supper. Yeah. Or they take <laughs> yeah, a bunker yeah. and the what guys are, saying? they're trying to surrender. Yeah. Like, nah, yeah. He's like, what, what? <laughs> he said, I washed for supper. Yeah, I washed for supper. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, but yeah, the only thing about that movie is it kind of itched my head a little bit because you, you see, so the, the assault is, there's rangers involved. Yeah. Obviously. So yep. you can see the two diamonds on the back of their helmets, mm-hmm. which was the pretty much what made two diamonds famous for like second ranger battalion mm. so the anything if you see an orange diamond with a number in it that is a ranger like staple that okay. is like a, a unofficial official <laughs> logo and mascot of all of ranger battalions nice. um so the only thing was in in his historically second ranger battalion was responsible for point du hawk okay so point du hawk was imperative to the success of the D-Day And that was landing. kind of a pre-mission, right? That wasn't D-Day. That was like the day before? Yeah, that, it, it was very close. Okay. So D-Day wouldn't have happened if this didn't basically right. go down. Because so they had to take they out... took out the guns That's that right. allowed the boats to de- get close. So okay. Okay. about 200 men of DECO, the boys of DECO and 275, basically scaled uh, these cliffs uh, using ladders. And 200 men scaled... And about 90 made it up. But they were able to take out these howitzer guns that made the D-Day invasion possible. Mm-hmm. So, And that was 2nd Ranger Battalion. 5th Ranger Battalion was on the beach. Whoa. And that's where Rangers Lead the Way came from. Okay. General Normandy Coda, I know some of us have heard me talk about this, but hey. General Nor- Normandy Coda was in charge of the uh, conventional forces that were assaulting with 5th Ranger Battalion. And when 5th Ranger Battalion was assaulting, they're like, he's like, oh, who, hey, who are you guys? And he's like, we're 5th Ranger Battalion. And he goes, oh, well, Rangers lead the way then. Keep, <laughs> keep it going. Um, so that was 5th Ranger Battalion's on the beach. So my confusion was I saw two diamonds on their helmets, uh, okay. not five diamonds. So I was like, okay. But no. that if you guys know the reason behind that, please send me a message because I'm <laughs> very curious. Or they just did a little bit of a mess up. And it's okay because the scene is amazing. Iconic. Iconic scene. Iconic. Great. What else we got, Cam? What else you want to talk about? Um. Oh, this one's cool. <laughs> this one's really cool. <laughs> it's kind of it's real random in here, and I'm I'm glad to hear. But Reign of Fire from 2002. Oh yeah. Dragons. Oh, yeah. Dragons. I wanted to get this one in here. This is my pick. Oh, this is your yeah, pick? yeah because uh, it has to do with ha- essentially a Halo, Halo team. Yeah, yeah, Halo they, jump. That's how, talk about the most unconventional way <laughs> to take, to out, take a out a dragon hey you know these things that fly and breathe fire and you know fly mm-hmm. <laughs> we're gonna jump, jump out of a plane and fall strategically with metal net guns yeah. to try to take <laughs> them out you know it's so wazoo it's so crazy yeah. but i love it because you never really so rain of fire movie 2002 christian bale matthew mcconaughey yeah matthew mcconaughey's uh, characters i yeah, iconic man. Yeah, he, he, so uh, England, you know, dragons are back. Yeah, they yeah. decimate society. It's in England, so Christian Bale's trying to survive. Matthew McConaughey shows up on a tank, down a tank with, with a, a with a helicopter. Ass head. Yep, and he's a crazy man. He's crazy. And they got this strategy where they have halo jumpers, uh, and and they, they jump out of a helicopter. They jump out of a helicopter. They go after the dragon in and mid-air. they try to take him out. And yeah. it, it does it does not go well. No, they're like, <laughs> but we've taken really dragons exciting. out before. It is an it's very creative. <laughs> yeah, is it uh, smart? No. No. But hell, no. you don't get anywhere by, you know, remaining in your comfort zone. Right, exactly. Life I mean, begins at the end of your comfort zone. <laughs> exactly. That's and they, they use strategy, you know, they try to get the triangulation with like the radar posts out throughout yeah. the land, kinda see it in the air, give them, you know, live action or you know, live real time feed. Uh, feed and stuff yeah, like that. Tracking. And it's just just an, just a really cool kind of interesting idea. Uh, that uh, yeah, one guy's being chased by the dragon, yeah. and the other dude are behind it, Chase and he gets chased so bad that it, like he's not paying attention, and he just slams right into the ground. Yeah, like, he's just like, gone. That's a terrible you know? way to die. Yeah, and then the other two they fire their nets halfway through, and they get him, and they think it's a lot. It's real cloudy. They're falling yeah. for like five minutes. Like yeah. they, they so must have been like a hundred thousand feet, you yeah. know, in the, ab- uh, just in above the, atmosphere. the atmosphere. They can see the curvature of the earth. That's yeah. what takes them, you know. <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, 
It's a Red Bull commercial. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, you know, uh, the other two guys, they one guy gets chomped by the the dragon coming back yeah. up, and then the other kind of gets, gets away. But uh, it not a very not a very smart way to fight a dragon, mm-hmm. but very interesting. Hadn't seen it in a movie before. Extremely entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a big battle, but definitely worth a quick mention in yeah. this. So the next one I want to talk about, speaking of big battles, yes, Battle of the Bastards from Game of Thrones. Game right? of Thrones, Season 6, Episode 9, Battle of the Bastards. This yeah. is Jon Snow and the Wildlings versus Ramsay Bolton and his army, who's actually taken over Winterfell, which is Jon mm-hmm. Snow's like home, right? Yeah. And Just for a little bit of background. Yeah. It's It's epic. a grudge match. It's, it's a so, grudge match. It's a grudge match for sure because, uh, you know, Ramsay's got – Ramsey's got Rickon, which is Jon Snow's younger brother, yeah. and he uses him like as bait because they're he saying rip like his balls off. No, he like uh, they've got you know they they got to be smart because Ramsey's a smart guy. He's yeah. good at like getting into people's heads and stuff. He so he's got Rickon. He makes Rickon run to John. Oh, it's like, like it's like three hundred meters. Yeah, it's like and he's zigzag, running and he's, zigzag. yeah, he's like throwing. Yeah, he's like and he shoots shooting the arrows bow and arrow. And yeah. right at the last minute, he shoots an arrow like hits him right in the throat right yeah. before he gets to John. And then John just loses it, and then everybody has to go in and fight, but they're not well positioned, so yeah. it ends up being like kind of this. They get encircled, you know, and there's dead bodies everywhere. And I, I just thought it was cool because the creators they said, "Hey, we we kind of took inspiration from a little bit of Battle of Cane, I think, uh, uh, and then a little bit from the Civil War. Battle of Cane was like this big engagement where uh, the, the I think it was the Romans were fighting against like wildlings or whatever the dramatic tribes and they end up getting encircled and just killed to a man you know really uh yeah and then the other one the civil war there's a uh, there was a, a story about so many people in this one battle in this one area getting killed that the bodies actually started piling up and becoming like barricade. obstruction yeah, yeah. and a, a barricade and so they do that in the battle as they're getting encircled there's bodies piling high and John Snow John Snow almost gets like crushed like and suffocated by these other men because they're just being crushed yeah. in and and you think you think they're done for, and then like at the last second, um, uh, the Knights of the Vale come in, uh, you know, with uh, Littlefinger and mm-hmm. and Sansa. Well, Little Fing- Sansa's inside, but uh, Littlefinger comes in. He saves the day with the Knights of the Vale and stuff. So yeah, dude. it's a good one. It's a good. One. <sighs> Who's the dude. guy that gets his balls chopped off? Oh, that's his, uh, the, that's um, they call him Rat or something. No, no, yeah, uh, that's uh, no, he he becomes. Uh, uh, oh man! See now I'm forgetting. It's it's, it's um, Ramsey's Joy. Man it's a uh, it's Greyjoy. Um, Greyjoy. Uh, he's Theon. Theon, Theon Greyjoy, Greyjoy gets captured by yeah, Ramsey, Ramsey Bolton and, and tortured, and he calls and he, he put, cuts his balls off. Yeah, he castrates. No, him. he cuts his penis off. He cuts, he cuts his penis his, off. His wiener. wiener. Uh, wiener very important. Up. And then his name is Reek. 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 Yeah, he kind of he's so psychologically scars yeah, me. You don't know to make your name is Reek now, and he has such a hard time breaking out of that because he's so beaten in his yeah. mind one thing you know? about that entire series is it has amazing it has such a good way of making you hate somebody so oh, much. oh yeah for example the little prince boy joffrey joffrey, joffrey prince joffrey, Bird, joffrey. Yeah. you're like if you ever saw him on you know how you know people by like their the characters they play like for example the Mouth Boy from Harry Potter. Potter. Yep. Who will never be. A, nobody knows his real name. They just know him as Mouth Boy. Yeah, a little yeah. Mouth Boy. boy. Exactly. Yeah. And the Harry Potter. If you saw him on the street, or David Ray, Radcliffe. Radcliffe, right? Mm-hmm. He's he's he Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah. He's Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. That's yeah. Harry Potter. His name's not Daniel. That's got to be rough, man. I yeah. hear the guy who. It's like uh, Frodo. Yeah. He's, he's Frodo. He's, he's Frodo. He's nobody else. He did, Elijah, Wood, Elijah has, Wood has had a career before and after, you know. Yeah. But like the he's the, the guy who played Joffrey, he doesn't even do acting anymore. Not because because he's been lo- bullied to submission. That's why I, I heard wants it, to kill him. Maybe that might be partly why. But he actually said that in an interview, he just doesn't like acting. He doesn't like the lifestyle, the hours. Yeah. So he just does whatever he, he uses that fat Game of Thrones cash and just lives. His yeah, life, literally. You know? So like like I said, Ramsey too. That yeah. he was kind of a low key actor because I looked into his background too. He wasn't well known and then yeah. now he's nah, just Ramsey. He's Ramsey, he's Ramsey and everything. And that dude, him. you know, like Joffrey made it through two and a half seasons, right? Because yeah. he got killed in the in, in his own red wedding, you know. Yeah. Uh or the Good. purple wedding, maybe. Good. But then Ramsey, he came in around season two or three 
and he lived for a long time and you hate he he did so much that you're just yeah. like somebody kill him somebody and he gets it him. he gets it the best way possible yeah, he does. you know it's, yeah it's good but yeah had to throw that battle in there it's such a good one i mean even honorable mentioned the last battle in the final season against the zombies that last like yeah. two episodes long yeah i get yeah yeah the the bat that being a battle well i don't know man actually you know what there's so many battles in that series but that see, are just... i can't even go there with you man it, because there's so many i have so much i have such a problem with season eight of game of thrones man. okay you i know? mean i do like the when they go behind they're like in a recce element and they're looking for the white walkers and they have to take out that entire element and uh she comes in on the dragon and saves their ass. Yeah, she like blows them yeah. away. Oh, oh yeah, in in season seven, yeah, like season, towards the end, yeah, they have yeah, to yeah. go and they have to capture a White Walker a white, so they can use it yeah. as proof to show the people in King's Landing that their threat's real. Or no, they have to get just one of the little minions, the yeah, dead. They just have to get a live. Yeah, one, and right? there's like six of them. They're in like a recce element. Yeah, and, and it's all it's like all the surrounded. people you've loved. It's a it's a you know it's um uh, it's John Snow, John Snow, the Hound, the Hound. It's, it's, uh, the, yeah, the, the guy with the Jora, Jora Mormont, you know, yeah. yeah, the yeah the the bear, he's my the, the favorite guy, guy. That loves the the big lady, yeah, like, he loves, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's like, who is that woman? woman. Yeah. yeah, she's great for breeding. Yeah, he loves that. Uh, what's her name? Brienne of Tarth. He's yeah, so Brianna in love Tarth, with her because yeah. she's just she's a big, huge. massive warrior woman. Yeah, that guy's <laughs> awesome. He's part of giants. Dude. Okay, well, we can talk about this some more, or yeah. we can talk about Avengers. Oh, we got to talk about Avengers. But see, here's the thing. Which one do we talk about? We kind of got them both on here. My choice uh, uh, was the uh, inv- in- the uh, battle at uh, um, Wakanda in Infinity War. Oh, that's right? a good When one. they're there to defend the Vision, and then they got the force fields, and then the, the aliens come in, Thanos' troops, and they start breaking through the force fields. That epic battle. Mm-hmm. Uh, I chose that over then the, like, the, the last battle in Endgame. You know, because it just because they end up losing at the end, and yeah. Thanos ends up winning. You know, yeah. it's just like it's just not enough, and you just love it so much because it, you expect them. You know, from ten years of building up this series, you, of course they're gonna win. You know, like they have you know, to. yeah, like uh, Thor comes in, bring me Thanos. He's got Stormbreaker. And stuff. Yeah, like we got this. It's so gonna happen. And then at the end, he just he just the snap, man. Oh, yeah, it's, it's so good, man. Yeah. I just remember that feeling I had the first time I saw it. I got to so go to cool. a press screening, like yeah. a pre-screening, oh, yeah. and to know, like, to have at the end, it ends so sadly with like the sad music, and you're like, dude, what is? <laughs> it's so good. Man. It's little Peter Parker he disappears in the <laughs> dude. Dude. little fart in the wind. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's a pretty gnarly. I just didn't understand. Like, there was a great battle, like an epic battle worth song and dance. <laughs> um, but when they finally ca- in the next movie, like where it catches up, and they see Thor, and he's like just a, a hermit. He's fat. He's like he's fat. fat and like, Thor. Yeah, no, not Thor. I meant Thanos. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, Thanos. Yeah, Dan- well, Fat Thor's there too. <laughs> fat Thor. But, is uh, Thanos. Yeah, Thanos is like just like a hermit. And he's like yeah. not powerful anymore, and I never understood why. It's just the gauntlet like was too powerful for him. Or well, something? no, well he, I mean, he, he, that was the farm that he had chosen to be like to be at when he finally won. He's like, this is where I'm going to be. I'm going to live my life here and just be a, a pretty, uh, you know, because I've done what I wanted to do. What he ends up doing is destroying the stones. He uses yeah. the stones to destroy the stones. That wrecks his arm and yeah. like totally like cripples him. So he's just like he's All just right. there, yeah. But he doesn't care anymore because he got what he wanted. Yeah, he got his he got his blip. Yeah. snap you know mm. yeah very crazy very fun very fun very <laughs> crazy cadoodles great no that's a good battle man i like the uh i also like the when they separate um well they become like two enemies the, the, the superheroes like separate like one's going after was it then once wants to talk about an infinity war end game you got to tell me because i'm very confused they, well they i don't know what do you mean separate so keep going so this, the avengers team kind of become two teams and you have like ant-man uh versus yeah. spider-man versus black panther versus um is this might be you know this oh, might be winter soldier this you, might be winter Soldier. oh winter soldier you're, no is you're talking it? about civil war is that civil captain war? america civil war they're against the good yeah, guys are against okay. each other yeah. okay there's captain so, america I've and his crew and iron man it's all big mess it's all at this big point mess. At this there's point, so many no battles yeah, we can talk, hey, we can talk about that one if you want to. That's, That's a cool technically battle when, a battle. It is a battle when Ant Man like reverses his thing and becomes like Super giant Ant Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, anybody uh, have any secret abilities that they? Uh, yeah, does anybody want to like share like anything they want to pull out? Yeah. yeah, because this guy just like did 
everything that I thought he couldn't do. He like Spider Man. Exactly, yeah, Spider Man's like, does anyone remember that really old movie, uh, Empire Strikes Back? Like, I'm gonna kill that kid. Yeah, <laughs> kill that kid. They're yeah. good. Those are so entertaining. It's you, like I don't look at them for like the, the the filmmaking, but like just the banter is. It's just such an entertaining series. Yeah, you just, want the the one thing, especially the, the Russo brothers. They're really good at is is giving that fan service. And also putting it within the structure of a good narrative, like a good story. Because you want to see, like, because it's a bunch of nerds sitting around, like, who would win, Captain America or Iron Man? Or who would win, Vision or Black Panther, you know? You want to know. And so they do that for us, but they put it within a larger context of, like, oh, there's this Wakanda Accords, and one guy, you know, Captain America doesn't want to follow it, you know, and stuff. Um but yeah, you wonder about that, you know, and, and you see the little the little banter back and forth, you know. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. It's Where are you funny. from? Brooklyn. Ah, oh, Queens, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's but the one thing about like superhero movies for me is like I know there's like all powerful superheroes that could just wreck shop anybody. And then they just throw like random ones in there. Like you mentioned Vision. <laughs> yeah. What? Vision is like just there for me. I don't know what his powers are. He has he looks different from everybody, but like uh-huh. what does he actually do? Right. And then uh what is it the the Scarlet Witch? Yep, Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch. She's like random in my Wanda mind. Wanda Maximoff. Yeah. Yeah. She, but she's really powerful. Her. She, yeah, she's a bit. She's a bit OP. Like her powers kind of get like, especially if you watch the series, the WandaVision series. Like yeah. now she's gonna be like super powerful, and I think she's gonna be featured uh, in, in the movie? upcoming. No, she's gonna be in uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Oh, very cool. Uh, which gives me thoughts about the Loki series that's going on right now because that anyway. There's that's all so nerdy many, fan yeah, theories. Marvel man. is just off the chain right yeah, now. They, they're well, everywhere they, yeah they're blowing up yeah they're 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 the kings right now yeah you know? we'll are. see if they can maintain that you know because now we're going into the next phase side note next phase who knows if you know shang chi they got you know uh, the marvels coming out they got all these new movies are they going to be able to kind of maintain that wave that they started with the the first four three four phases yeah we'll see you know? i got one more on here can i take a guess of what it's going to be <laughs> you may at this list yes you may. is it aliens 1986 the escape Battle? you are correct yeah. that is we got i got to talk about this now look i'm going to give everybody a break because i've talked about the initial engagement on sub level three before in previous uh, episodes or whatever yeah, for uh, those of you who don't know <laughs> aliens is israel's favorite movie of all time and of those of you who time. do know it's pounded in your brain <laughs> and you if you listen to even one of these uh, two one or two of these episodes you'll know but it's the it's the escape battle okay so they barricaded themselves away they're down to the last couple marines you know ripley's there newt's there hicks you know and they just found out that uh the company man uh has bet- has betrayed them you know burke and uh, he tried to get Ripley and, and Newt impregnated with the face huggers and stuff. He locked him in a room there. So they're talking about this dude. They're like, we're going to waste this dude. Like, you are so done, you know? And uh, and then the lights cut out, and they find out that the aliens have gotten into the compound, and they're, oh. like, closing in. They do such a good job with the uh, the motion trackers because it's such a great way of building tension, right? Because they're, like, they're, they're 30 meters out. Now they're 20 meters out. How'd they get in? They don't know, you know? Like, oh, it's so great. And then finally there's that moment with, like, they realize that like they've gotten through like the air ducts. That's yeah. how they got in. And so Hicks gets up there and it's like this moment where the sound drops out and he's looking around. And then bam, they're right there and he starts blowing blast him away. And they're like, ah, oh, and they're like jumping through Lucky's. the ceiling and stuff like that. And then my some of my favorite moments it's definitely uh I mean Hicks's or uh, Hudson's last stand. Cause Hudson's like he's kinda he turned out, you know, he acts like a bit he's he acts like he's this awesome dude, but he's really kind of a coward. But then at the end he redeems himself and he's like blowing him away. He's like, You want some of this? You want some? And then the final the, the aliens grab him from underneath the floorboards and they pull him down and it, oh it's so sad. And then and then when they're going through the air ducts, they're trying to make it to the airfield, um, with uh um Gorman and Vasquez, they get fall, they fall behind, and they get surrounded, and they take a grenade and they like hold it blow together, them. and they blow themselves they up. Like, you always were an asshole, Gorman, and she blow, they blow. Oh, it's so good, man! It's just that whole sequence from start to finish, it's just so masterful, man. So I just, I had, I had to mention it. So now I'm done. I got out of my system okay. for today. I appreciate it. I love watching you talk about it because, like, it's like watching a little kid like talk about something that happened to them that day that excited them. Yeah, like I gotta tell you, Uncle, I gotta tell you, there's Uncle a stick Cameron, Uncle it, Cameron. It, 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 the stick, it's not just any stick. It looked like a katana. I picked it up, and then you know, Jimmy across the street, he he didn't have a stick like this one. No, sir. This is a really good stick. Yeah. No, sir. This is the one stick that everybody wanted. I was the king of the castle. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm good. I'm done. I got it out of my system. Now. Now. 
time. You know what it is time. It's time. You know what time game. it is. You know it. You love it. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> game time, baby. It's game time, baby. <laughs> All right, for this game, it's called Slanging It. Me and Izzy don't know anything about this game. It's another controlled by Chris type of game. Yeah, we got some phrases. Hello. Hey, Hello. Chris is back. Chris. Phrases. We so if as I understand it, we have to is it we have to find out there it's a slang term, but is it a military slang or is it just some stuff that Chris came out of? I think of it's, a, oh, yeah, it's a it's translator. Should. It's like he's gonna tell us a slang word and we're gonna it's try to translate. It's not just general slang. That wouldn't that wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> okay. I'm not I'm not going on Urban Dictionary. I'm like, what's a rusty trombone? <laughs> oh yeah, rusty trombone <laughs> is where they blow in your butthole and they jack you off from behind. <laughs> I, I wasn't. I, 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 have I have to go. <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> I have to also, wash my ears out. That's also that's not what it is. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ooh, oh, you, that's a steam. You that's experienced a something else, steamer. my friend. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna say some phrases, and you have to tell me if it's real military slang or just some BS I made up. Okay. If it is military slang, you have to tell me what it means. Okay. Okay. What if it's something that you thought was military slang, and I'm just like, that's not real. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out. Okay. All right. So Here let's we go. start. This is the warm up one. All right. The first one. Nut to butt. Nut to butt is absolutely real. Absolutely real. What does it mean? It means when you're lining up, you get real close to the guy in front of you, behind yeah. you. Like they're trying to make space. Yeah, you're you're, co- you're condensing the line, so yeah. you get really close to each other. Your testicles as close to his a... posterior yes. as possible. That is, that is. I call it testicles to posterior. Oh, that's the technical term. That is correct. <laughs> that is all correct. Everything you guys said is correct. Okay, I'm perfect. very impressed. Everything we say is correct. Okay. Everything right. we say accurate. This next one. Hanging jimmies. Hanging jimmies. That's an interesting one. Um, hanging jimmies, it either means... Well, is it real or is it fake? I've, I think it's real. I, I, it sounds fake to me. It's not familiar to me, but I can guess what it, what it might mean. <laughs> Take your underwear off. That's what I say. Let the jimmies yeah. hang. I was gonna say like just yeah. like you know if you're a bunch of dudes standing around naked maybe yeah as, as might happen in the military. or it's like you're barefoot take your shoes off so hang your jimmies, jimmies. You, your toes are your jimmies oh interesting that's what I see but or is it real or is it fake uh, are you guessing real or fake what I'm your guessing guess? it's real I'm guessing fake it's fake okay yes. I made it up I win made forever but a possible meaning is doing pull ups or an alternate name for going commando okay <laughs> hang your jimmy okay yeah, that makes sense I like. Very clever. Very clever. Okay. Right, next next one. one. Soup sandwich. Soup sandwich. That is a real term. Yeah, I think it's yeah, it's a real term. Yeah, it's because could you imagine? It's it's means a complete mess. If I call something a soup sandwich, it's a complete mess because imagine if you had a sandwich made of soup, yeah. that would be really it's all hard. over. You can't it's all you can't over the place. And hold on to it. It's just everywhere. Yeah, no. It that is a real term and it means a complete mess. That is one hundred percent accurate. <laughs> yes. Very good. I, I am impressed, Cam. Knows the slang. I am the slang king. I use. I, I talk in slang. I, ubonics. I'm. 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 I'm thankful to be a part of an organization where old habits die hard and old slang lives forever. Because mm-hmm. like I'm sure guys back in the 60s and 70s were saying nut to butt. You know. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of that soup lineage. sandwich. Yep. Part of the lineage. All right. The next one is unass the ao. That is that is definitely real because I have yeah. heard that phrase. <laughs> I Un-ass remember. Unass this AO. It means clean this area of operation yep. up. It looks like shit. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So yep. We're, we'll go with real. Messy, another kind of physically messy. Get, things are disorganized. And it's kind of, it's not even in regards, the slang term is unass. It's not the AO. Because you can say unass anything. Yeah. Unass this, unass that uniform. Unass exactly. this bathroom. Unass the unass. So that's a real term. That is a real term. <laughs> You're 100% right now, yeah. Cam. Thanks. I'm I'm gonna oh, wait, actually no I got I'm 100 percent right 100%. now. He's 100. I got he's I like got batting like I was hanging Jimmy over here. Oh, sorry, yeah. I Mr. Hanging Jimmy, Mr. I Forty Mike, you, Mike hanging yeah, Jimmy. Forty Mike, Mike hanging Jimmy. You you hung your Jimmies. <laughs> um, next one, Barney style. Barney style is 100 percent a real term. I am not familiar with this. You've not Barney no. style. Is that like getting friendly with each other? Let me break this down, Barney style. You <laughs> moron. So, oh, okay, yeah. like making it a yeah. real simple it's term. Super, it's like dummy style because oh, okay. Barney's Barney like style. super young. It's like Ooh. like preschool. It's yeah. <laughs> so that is one hundred percent a real term, and you use it for people that aren't understanding a thing. When it's like, okay, let me break this down for you, Barney style. All right. Now, is that Barney like the dinosaur, or Barney like Barney Fife from? Barney the Dinosaur. Ooh. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure when I was reading it, and I couldn't find it's out. It's Barney the Dinosaur because it's like preschool. I'm okay. very impressed. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm very impressed that you know all these. Okay. Of course. <laughs> the next one, getting a shoe shine. 
that sounds dirty. Yeah. <laughs> I would say that's a fake one. Yeah, that sounds fake. Because we don't shine our shoes. Ob- well, I mean, obviously it's not referring to shoes, so it's just we're left to the imagination to what yeah. is it referring to. I can't think of one. I've never heard that one, I don't think, in the military, so I'm going to say it's fake. I'm going to say that is fake as well. It is so fake. That is so fake. <laughs> that was, I felt like I was writing it, and I was like, this isn't going to pass. This isn't going to get him. <laughs> Not even you believed it. Possible meaning kissing ass or getting your ass chewed by a commanding officer. Shoe shine. He's really getting a shoe shine in there. Really shoe shine. I love how you come up with the definitions, too. I'm, you don't yeah. just come up with a phrase. And you're like, that'll work. Possible like, definition. No, this probably means <laughs> something like this. Super deep. You're getting super it's deep. part of the fun. It. it is. It's great. All, All right. right. This next one, I'll be impressed if you get it. A blue falcon. Blue falcon. Oh, is a, that's an easy one. Yeah, that's blue falcon. Easy. I don't know. I wasn't in the military. Really? Yeah, blue falcon means... You have to say it. Yeah, because I am the cursing one. A blue falcon <laughs> is an acronym. So BF, it means buddy f- So if you get called a blue falcon, it means you're screwing people up. You're or screwing you're, over the you're other screwing guys. over other people, so yeah. it's bad to be called a blue falcon. Yeah. So yeah. You want to back your buddies play. You want to be a battle buddy, right? Yeah, it's basic training kind buddy! of stuff. You want to help your guys out. You always want... There's, there's a great emphasis on... Team teamwork. unity, teamwork, supporting yourself, supporting the guy next to you. And if you don't do that, if you're slacking off, if you're not yeah. obeying the rules, if you make a mistake, you're, 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 blue, you're falcon. blue falcon. Yeah. You're blue falcon. I'm, I'm so impressed. <laughs> All right. And the last one is a turd slinger. Turd slinger. That's a real one. <laughs> it, it's is, that of, that, is that that lady at Starbucks? In the... No. It's <laughs> No. That's sometimes that's what they called me out there at AT when I was pooping out my butt, Whoa. like projectiling. Super soaker. Super soaker. Yeah, it was not good. Oh. But a turd slinger is a real term. It's a uh, it's a real term, and it basically it's kind of like a knuckle dragger. Uh, um, okay, like it's a like dumb, a moron. Okay, You're like a moron. moron. Hey, you f- turd slinger. It's like a monkey, pretty much. You know how they, <laughs> right. they throw their poo. Throw their poo. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like you're primitive. You're you're a knuckle dragger. You're kind of a moron. And I'm gonna set my answer in for real. It's fake. I made it up. Really? What? I've literally used that term. Well, I mean, <laughs> so it's real to Cameron. It's real to me. But I I couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> really? Okay, well, I've used it. Hey, you turds. I'm slinger. surprised. I think any, probably any number of combination of words and insults have been used at some oh, yeah, point in the military. Yeah. My, my made-up meaning is a mess hall cook or a nickname for a plane making an airdrop. Really? <laughs> turd slinger. Very original. Very original. Wait on the cool. turd slinger. Really? I mean... Your limitations for military slang is the imagination. Right. So if you can come up with any amount. I like to go really preschool. And I think the the more simpler the terms, like calling someone like a, a stupid head or calling them like a doo-doo brain, <laughs> it, it, it hits hard. And it's like, hey, I, I also say jackahoon, which I don't know what that means. <laughs> jackahoon. Yeah, it's like jackals. And oh, okay. I don't know. I, I'm just like, you guys are running around like, like a bunch a platoon, of jackahoons. Like a black, all right, black. Not, a, a, a platoon. <laughs> not, Excuse uh, me. Cut that out. Uh, a platoon a of platoon. jackals. A platoon. Like a, pl- a jackahoon, you know. Yeah. So. I think you mix up the word platoon and jack, and you're just like, black. <laughs> you plus, yeah, yeah. That was, that was just a brain fart. Yeah. Don't, don't read too much into that. Don't read too much into that one. <laughs> <laughs> well thankfully that's all the time we got for this one uh, a good one we appreciate you uh, all joining us for this episode of the podcast folks we, uh, we release a new episode every Wednesday and if you want to go over to uh, our YouTube page uh, video should be up uh, every Friday the same week of we always got little extra bits for those that like to uh, view it on YouTube so like subscribe share that stuff out Absolutely. there Absolutely, we appreciate you so much uh, and now, um, if you uh, want to show us some love, if you want to come in contact with us, uh, go to our Instagram page, uh, PCFM Podcast. And then also you can write us some emails at PCFM Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to hang out with me a little bit more, uh, I live stream on Twitch. You go to twitch.tv slash my happy self. Cameron? And if any of you turd slingers want to check out my uh, streetwear brand, Kick God Apparel, you can find us on Instagram at Kick God Apparel or go on the website to check it out, www.kickgodapparel.com. Would really appreciate the support. And that is it. So long. Bon voyage. We'll see you on the next one, team. Absolutely. Cue music!